Oh, Just like Willie said, my name is Ash Fortis. I am the owner of Exo Hair Lab here in Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, I've got two beautiful clients here for you guys. This is Miss Olivia. You can see that I have brushed her hair out. We want to give you a good idea of what canvas we're working on today. And then what we're going to do to have, as you can see, this beautiful lift out. This is sent June 29th. So what we usually do is we root, lighten her. Um, we are very cautious. She has a lot of hair and she's coarse and she has some history that I just want to briefly go over in a consultation and kind of just share with you guys. When I get this in the salon, some of the best ways I utilize this behind the chair. Um, you can see she's got a pretty dark plus five as her natural base. Lydia usually lightens pretty well with the way that we go about her lightening. Um, but we do have some old history. She is a spooky queen, so we have had a lot of different creative colors over the time. Um, but you can see we have a generally beautiful canvas. Um, I don't know if you can quite see from there, but we do have some residual old green in our tips. Um, I can probably provide a photo later. Um, to kind of go a little bit more in depth with what that looks like. Um, just to give you guys an outline of what we're going to do today, we'll be spending 45 minutes roughly together just going about this process um, from consultation into how I go about my application with root lightning um, and some of the pro tips that you can take with you, whether you're just starting these types of services or you're looking to have more advanced education on them. Um, so this is Miss Olivia. These are some of the recent colors we've had. So you can see green is not easy to remove out of the canvas, but through a lot of patience, dedication, good at-home care, um, I've had a great relationship building back to being more platinum blonde. So Miss Olivia, again, has been every color of the rainbow. We went green, then we did a big haircut. Um, Throughout time, um, some of the things that we've had as challenges where there was a period of time where some of her lightning retouches weren't being as delicate. So, you know, you can see what looks like this. We always think of damage that comes, right? This level of blonde is the furthest the hair goes before it's going to be compromised at pretty high levels. So um, the biggest challenge is your line where you are going to be overlapping is much shorter to the scalp. So of course that creates challenges where we want to avoid breakage being inches off the root or inches down in the mid shaft. Obviously we would like to maintain as much integrity as possible through this process. So please be sure to have thorough consultations with your guests and gain all hair history. Um, if she's somebody that had old low lights or things of that nature, we would have to really approach it a little differently. You'll see that with my um, client that I have that I'll show in spotlight throughout today. But our main focus is going to be Olivia. Um, she did go through some thyroid cancer, so that did weaken her hair as a whole. Um, with a lot of the issues with your thyroid, you're going to deal with more dry, brittle hair. So that's something to really think about because if the hair is being hydrated with the use of lightener, you may need to like adjust your approach. You may need to change your goal and inform your client that on base, maybe there needs to be a buffer and we're only lifting to maybe a level nine instead of like a 10 and 11. So we've got high goals today. We like to be platinum and as light as possible. Um, and in today, what we'll do is just covering basically the application process. Processing time is going to be pretty lengthy, so I don't want to keep you guys bored and in tune with that. But what me and Willie are going to be doing is just taking photos throughout the whole process. We'll come back into the comments and we'll share. This is her after her lightning session before toner. Um, so you have a good raw photo of that. And then I will share what she looks like after toning with the formula. And then we'll continue to just keep you guys updated for the full view into today. But we're going to go ahead and get busy with application. Um, and then I've got a timer for my other client who um, is looking for a block coloring. So it does entail global lightning from root to ends. Um, but she does have some old hair history between virgin hair, old color, and some old highlights. So you'll get to see a few takes on how we're going to go about global lightning today. Um, I'll give a pause and just see if there are any questions before I get started with all of that. Nothing so far, Ash. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So I really like to start in the back. To me, it's where I'm going to be safest. When I'm going to rinse out my client, I am going to have to rinse in quadrants. When you're using lightener, lightener starts the minute you apply. 
So I find that this technique allows me to be quick and efficient um, and allows me to go ahead and rinse when necessary. I like to take vertical sections and I'm going to be for her applying directly on scalp and then feathering right to her um, previous line of lightning. So we're going to be looking to say about a quarter inch just to tear off of her previous lightning because one, we know the lightener will swell. Two, we want to preserve that line because we know all of this takes more time and is going to require more time than these areas. We do have a little buffer before we get to these lightest areas. Um, you can see a lot of times I do try to lift them to a very high level nine. That's just going to allow us that when that liner is going to swell, because it is its job, that we have a little bit of protection. Again, she has a lot of hair, so your overdirection also plays a huge role on your application. So I find that this is one of my um, best techniques for something like this. You can also see that I've got a lot of saturation. So for me, you're going to see me kind of use what some may apply as a balayage technique, meaning that they're going to get a strong bead of whitener so that when they take their section, they're going to have full saturation. You're going to see me maintain good tension as I go ahead and apply everything through. And again, I'm just looking to leave that little bit of line because I am going to be over directly on top of it. So as I do my root applications, I go through and apply several times. So once I've worked well in a quadrant, you're going to see me go back through that quadrant and take um, close to diagonal sections back. And I'm going to check for a few things. One, I'm going to make sure that the hair, which is greedy, as I like to call it, is still properly saturating. Um, and getting what it needs everywhere. It's gonna be kind of like whoever's first off to the races. So I wanna make sure when I go back through that I haven't missed areas that are gonna really need that full bit of lightning. So then I have as close to even lift as possible. You can see the size of my subsections are really small as well. Again, in the effort to just really keep good control and quality saturation. With most bonding, that's going to be the, the secret to getting high lifting bonding um, as easy as possible. Baby lights have become a big thing because you are taking smaller sections and you're giving full saturation. So that's kind of what, you know, whether you're back teasing to create a soft line and buffer or you're using it to create a smaller weave or you're just taking fine woven highlights or slices, having small sections and full saturation is gonna be the key to your bonding, being even, consistent, um, and for us today also a high gold blonde. I'm gonna go ahead and take another pause just in case there are anybody that's joining or has any questions as well. I'll take every couple of minutes just to kind of check in with you guys as I'm moving to make sure I'm not going too fast. Um, and if there are any additional questions. What is your favorite ratio of lightener to developer for on scalp applications so it doesn't get dried out too quickly? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, from brand to brand, there's all different products. Um, you know, some are going to be blue lightener, some are going to be designed for on scalp lightning. I don't necessarily have a preference in that, but I do think that your ratio is important. The thing to remember is that if you have too much developer, it's not going to lighten as effectively, and most likely it's going to cause some scalp irritation. Um, and then again, just like Willie kind of was sharing in the question, and if somebody else filtered this or whether it was from Willie, if it's too thick, it's going to dry out. So I like to kind of be descriptive about my consistency um, while also talking technical and as far as my terms of like how I mix. So we mix each bowl here with two ounces of lightener. When we are doing services like this, we do have a service price uh, built in our cart. So it is important for us to make sure we have allotments because again, everybody has different lengths of roots to cover, different densities of hair and things to consider. So we do two scoops of whitener and then we pretty much do about almost a one to two ratio with developer. And then we do add, um, add in adjustable flex as well. So I like to kind of look at the consistency and kind of see here. It's almost like a really nice, soft, like cream cheese. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. Have a good spread on your bagel. That would be my best description. 
Alexa, so you can see I'm just crossing in. Once I get a little further, I'm going to go back and I'm going to just cross check back into my section. You can see I'm just leaving the tiniest bit of um, area in between that will get hit here soon. I'm just going to give it the opportunity to work in and see how far it swells. And then when I get a little bit further from my root lift, then I'm gonna go ahead and cover it completely. Um, my cross checks are like two and three, four times sometimes. So my root applications are tedious and they do take a good amount of time to apply. Um, and I think one of the things that makes them as even and clean lift outs is how many times I will go through and cross check and make sure that the saturation is really good. Um, and make sure that my areas of lightning that are going to cross over aren't going to cross too far and create damage, you know, a few inches off of the scalp. It's easier for me to start the middle vertical section right in the back, and then I'm going to go to the ear. And so then I'll go back and bring my cross section down, and then you can kind of start gauging and looking at your lightning. And just pulling those sections down and just making sure that everything that you're crossing over just feels like it's going with the natural way that the hair is growing in. And you're not feeling like you're really over directing and crossing those hairs on your whitener. Kind of one of those big things where you just really want to keep in place. Some people use cotton. Uh, that is also an option. Uh, for me, I don't tend to go to that all the time, just because I still know that I'm going to have basically what the cotton is going to do is it's going to sit there and it's going to act as that buffer for that quarter inch that you're looking to preserve. And so sometimes for me, it just, I'm going to miss areas more if I use cotton. So I just learned to be more, more comfortable um, just going in and lightning in an area that I know I'm going to have to go back through as I go and re What volume, uh, what volume, <laughs> what volume developer are you using? I'm sorry. No, you're great. So we are using 15 volume. Yep. So a little mix. We know Olivia gets there, but we do kind of like a low and slow approach. I typically do not use anything over 20 volume. Um, and most often work with 10 and 15 volumes. A lot of times I will go in with fresh patches of whitener for resaturation purposes. Um, or for example, I do have a man, um, Elijah, he is a black man who has very dark like level one roots and we do make him platinum in a day. It's not something I do um, advertise for the normal everyday person to do, but he knows the process. He quite literally is a firefighter and he's used to things being spicy. We are working with the scalp, so you do want to make sure that you have a little bit of pre-care before somebody is going to get the service. Um, if they freshly shampoo their hair the morning of or the night before, it might be a little extra spicy. If they've been out in the sun and it's summertime and they have a sunburn that they weren't aware of, it might be a little extra spicy. So during your consultation process, especially with new clients, just informing them that there can be irritation, there can be reactions, um, there can be things going on with the scalp that you might want to look at before you are putting, you know, lighter on scalp. Um, the other things that you can do is just like we're talking about preserving a quarter inch off of the previous light in the area. You can also, um, like I'm doing with my other client, I'm not on her scalp directly just yet. Um, I will be at her scalp right now because she does have bands in her hair. I have to address the darkest areas first. If you know somebody has virgin hair and old color, you really have to address, you know, as a, somebody that would specialize in blonding, really address the dark areas because to me, there's nothing worse than having platinum and then having like hair that can't meet that. Um, one, because as it grows out, it's there. It's going to continue to be there, continue to create problems for you. Um, and you're going to have to just lighten the hair to tone it down so you have some kind of even blend. So personally, I will work in the areas that need the most bonding first, time that out, and obviously it does take more time uh, in here to do that. So I'm gonna ask Olivia to look down for me. I'm gonna go back to my original vertical section. Like we said, hair gets greedy and she has a lot of it. So you can see, even though I've done really quality saturations in her hair, 
I'm still going to need to come back through before I move on to my next section. And I'm going to need to just go ahead and make sure that all the hair is getting as much as it properly needs before I feel comfortable moving on. So yes, we're working with 15 volume. You can see I'm going to go back down out of these subsections. And again, I'm tapping at the root. I like to keep everything nice and controlled. So I'm gonna have that tension there and I'm gonna just use my bowl and keep my, my brush as clean as possible. And I'm gonna have that bead of lightener that I really focus on that top part. And again, I'm taking small sections. So if you do the due diligence of kind of doing the tedious work and small section work first, it's gonna have a good payoff for you. And it's really going to ensure that what, you know, what most of us want, I think, to be successful, what I've learned over time of being a stylist behind the chair for 14 years, and then also having team members that I mentor, people that I educate is we want clients that come back to us. It's great to have a new client in the chair, but our role really is to foster um, long-term client relationships. So a lot of the work I do now, especially as a specialist in these services, is I think about what I'm doing today and how it's going to affect the next appointment and maybe six months down the line, maybe a year down the line. With blonding, I try to be as um, really ethical and safe about it as I can be and just informing clients, you know, the process they're undergoing. You got any other questions coming out there, Willie? No, we're, we're good for now. Cool. Awesome. So I'm going to finish up this section. Like I said, I've got everything just really working, feathering down. Still going to see a little line, a little quarter inch that we're going to keep off. After I'm done with this section, I'm going to bebop over to my other client. She's ready for a time check. Anytime you are doing lightning services for me when clients are processing, I do work with a double booking system. So for me, I am very comfortable with my processing times and doing bigger projects here, um, bigger services like this. So I will check in on them about every 15 or 20 minutes to see how their lightning is doing. And that just ensures me, one, they know that you know, while I am working with somebody else or working with an assistant that you know, I'm checking in on them. I haven't forgotten about them. And then... Also, it takes an opportunity for me just to make sure, you know, my saturation looks good um, and that I'm feeling good about the lift. You guys can already see that she is already lifting well. Um, we do try to just keep her in one full saturation. But again, Lightner kind of has a 55-minute maximum processing time, so it is going to start to, like, dull out and not have the same lifting capacity as it does when it's initially mixed. So when you're taking a new section, you're only putting in lightener on the bottom section. Why not the 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 top, if you will, as well? Um, so I'm putting it right on the root line. Um, I still have some area to like smudge it down, but I'm just saving that little tiny line buffer in between to have a little room for that swelling. Um, but in between here, we've got some a little bit of old banding that we want to preserve but I have not worked there yet just because I want to make sure that, you know, these areas are fully saturated and that they've gotten the lightener um, that they still need. I kind of coming back to the making sure like now that's full saturation. It started off as full saturation, but the hair starts to grab it. It starts to move a little. Um, and just to keep it lifting as light as possible, that's where I need to come in and continue to put more lightener. So I'm just really like doubling up my lightener as as it's moved and making sure that it has full saturation. And that section, better, it's not going to be as a strong a lift. That, and the section that you're getting ready to take and pull down, that section is going to sit on top of what the enlightener you just put in there. Mm -hmm. so that's why you're not doing, um, that's why you're not applying to the, the top section, if you will, because it's going to lay down over the top of what you just put on there. Right, I want to keep my section kind of controlled because if I bring everything back, everything back, eventually what's coming back in its over direction is going to cross into 
being like this area is going to fall on as my lightener. So I want to keep everything kind of controlled in my quadrants with the natural flow of the hair so that you can see it very faintly, that tiny quarter inch, barely a quarter inch that is right in this area isn't touched as of this moment. It just got two full, you know, lap arounds, if you will, to make sure that it's got good saturation at the root base. And we know it's going to take a little time to let the lightener swell and move down. But eventually I will come in for a third time and I will finally pull it down over just a little bit of that leftover level man here. Um, so once I'm done with that quadrant, just like I went to the top back of that ear, I'm going to take everything, move it over a little bit because I will be over directing the opposite way now. Vertically again, so I'll start just like I did that other quadrant. And so when I'm over directing, it's going to control everything. You see, I'm not using a bunch of clips that are cross contaminating my lightener into other areas. And I'm using like that side of my brush to really make sure that the lightener is well saturated, but again, also controlled just in that quarter inch. Hopefully that kind of helped answer, give the roadmap of like how I approach this. And we'll be at the top of the crown. This is some of the shortest hair. And again, the heat source is at the top. So, you know, some people will use saran wrap to move it along. She has a lot of hair. So I definitely know internally, I do not want to use anything that's going to create more heat. She's got enough here, you know, to create the heat that is going to insulate a lot of this lightener and move it and swell it. So again, it's just in an effort to get proper lift out, but also be cautious. All right, we're going to go take a little peek at my other client and see how she's processing and just discuss her really quick while we're in a good area for quick pause. All right, so we're doing block coloring on this client. She's got a really fun inspiration. Um, we did go through a full client history for her to know her old history. I can kind of give you a, a look about of that. She had some old highlights in here, um, old low lights as well. She does have virgin here and then she does have some old color that's covered over some old highlighting. Um, we're going to have her show a photo of what our inspiration is for today's block coloring look which will include like global lightning so really fun look you guys can see there's a pop but everything needs a really nice as light as possible platinum which we did not promise because we do not know, especially with first time clients, it's a big mystery. The only way you would know is if you do a test strand or you're already in that location. But the way that we approach it is again, I'm started in the back. I took good subsections, so I did say off of her virgin hair to start. I'm gonna go ahead and ask her to tilt her head down for me as well, because that just helps me to keep control again. And a lot of this is also, you know, your dexterity, the mechanicisms behind it. But you can kind of start seeing where some of that old history is throughout the hair shaft. So as best as my eye could see, um, I carried the lightener. It's kind of hard to tell because her old color is such a like dupe of her natural. Um, but I knew that doing this process would help to show me. So you can see that again with full saturation, which of course I had, there's still some lightener on my foil that the hair gets greedy. So I use that over and over again because full saturation is so important. A good way to kind of like tack on that too. Now see, I'm going to use an opposite foil because I don't want to get lightener where I don't want it. But if you take a foil, another way you can look and see the saturation is as much as your saturation is saturating, there's still probably more that it could take. So please make sure that, you know, throughout time of your bonding services, you're just taking extra time if you do want that lift to really check on those things. And you can even see with this, with that old color, we are getting a good lift, which is great. Her natural, um, you know, I think will cooperate more with us. But our goal is really this stuff that is creating a band because there's no point in getting everything else lighter unless that stuff comes up more. So I'm gonna go ahead and resaturate back in an area that is the darkest. I'm gonna allow for that lightener to stay kind of feathered, you know, we'll see if we need to wipe it here in the next 15 minutes. Um, but we're working with 
allowing our canvas to really show us the old history and what's possible today. Okay, I test out those ends there. So I circled them up in there just so I can have a good idea of um, what's going on with the ends because I can see some old color still dragging down into them. So that's going to be a little tester for, for me. Um, obviously, ends are a little bit more fragile or more susceptible, and so sometimes it'll lift a little bit easier too. So that test strand is going to kind of help me determine that. What's nice is you can always dry pull and come into your um, situation and kind of see do I need to pull lightener off of that area and then continue to work it onto another area. Um, and that's kind of how I approach lightning. You want to stay off of the virgin here nine times out of ten. Um, especially if you have old color. And I think addressing and going about it that way usually will set you up for better success with any type of blonding that you'll do. That pretty much wraps up for right now. Um, that gives you the best idea. We're going to have a 15, 20 minute timer again for her where we'll come back and check in. But I'm going to continue my application with Miss Olivia. Yeah, I just find working like this helps me to go really fast and efficient. And I don't have to worry about extra hands on working. But you will see I'm keeping my bowl and brush as clean as possible for this application. We're looking to be as on the cooler side as we can be. So, typically speaking, we're going to be in the higher level of blonde. So, we know we're going to have to be like, you know, kind of the inside of a banana. Really light blonde, but just so we can kick the light out. I will say, when you are working with something like this and you have just the root thing done, um, a pro tip that you can take away is that. Oftentimes, you're going to want to at least do a bleach wash at the bowl. Um, that's going to help you just to kind of like open up the rest of the canvas, just to kind of take that toner a little bit more evenly. Um, as you're throwing off the porosity with the lightener on the scalp, you don't want it to just take really bright and fresh on the scalp and then not be as consistent even for the rest of the hair. That's something I know. I know sometimes will come in and it's like, when you go to kind of do the final blowout, it's like, well, the roots look really fresh and brighter, and I almost think that the ends are going to match. So there's that little bit of slight variance. A bleach wash can go a long way just to kind of take a cold build up. Maybe it is to remove an old toner or purple shampoo. A lot of my clients that are more platinum will use a lot of at home purple shampoo that I'm not a big advocate for. I advocate more for being in salon and getting those plants and toners and treatments to make sure that your porosity is staying intact so that you can have the best um, longevity and results from your bonding and from the different times that you know you get retouched. That way you can avoid it being overtoned. Oh yeah. Um, and being kind of mindful of what you're using the tone to. I know some of my clients will get a little squirrely and they'll find some tinted purple or blue shampoo and then they come back and I go to remove it or give it a fresh off and then it's like coral or green and so that's kind of a nightmare um so definitely sometimes if you haven't done like a little green cautious just because um I have had that happen where somebody had like very silver hair and just like this, she had a very dark root, and I just knew that that was going to look brighter and more pearly than how the toner had built up kind of murky on the end. But the minute my bleach wash touched her hair, it went like salmon pink. So she ended up with pink hair that day and ended up with pink hair for me two years after. She did end up loving it, and she got away with it, but it definitely threw me for a loop. And that being like a toner, an old toner shampoo situation that just had pink when it was removed. Do you have a favorite purple shampoo? And how often do you recommend people use it? Um, I like 
any purple shampoo that's not too dehydrating. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I really like Olaplex purple shampoo. I've used in the past. Um, I have used Purple Riot. I've used a few different. There haven't been any that I like don't like per se, as long as they've been salon professional. But I really believe that they should be like once an occasion. So at the most, maybe once every week, week and a half to two weeks would be at the very most I would use it. I feel like at that point, you should just come in for a toner, you know, put glaze and go offer an express toning option. Or if you do have a salon, you're a salon owner, you know, I like to offer my finger stylist, you know, for something like that. Those are the areas that they're kind of mastering the foundations and fundamentals of. And um, yeah, I think that it's just a win-win for the client because those toners should kind of support what they have for longer than a purple shampoo. A lot of clients just get very habitual and they'll go home and they'll go right to their purple shampoo like it's their daily driver. And not only is it going to strip off the toner, but obviously then the issue becomes, it becomes too dry and brittle and that throws off the porosity or then create color challenges on top of breakage challenges. Um, just like dry cheese, you know, they are just products that you know, work really great for you, but also I would just be mindful about really how often clients are using them. I think sometimes like a toning conditioner actually would be my, my preference. Um, I have been using a line called Behave. They are based out of Australia. And they have a take-home product um, as well as Salon Back Bar. And they have one in violet and one in plate. So plate is a bit more gray, um, a very neutral core gray. It almost has like a background of like a true natural. So a little grayish, greenish. Um, and then violet is more of like your, your purple, you know, iciest possible option. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like they can be really great and they're going to be more moisturizing than you get from a purple shampoo. They're going to have a little bit more of a different deposit type. You'll hear me asking my clients to look down. Again, just my control over my canvas. You can see I am trying to keep pretty nice, neat, tedious sections. Um, I am going back through like that second time that we did on the other side. I'll give you guys a good look into what that side's looking like in just a second. We're kind of getting a sneak peek um, as I pull this other previous section down. But again, that saturation is what's getting me there. That control, the small sections, pulling the hair down taut, and just taking those beads of lightener in my bowl. So, making it a point to really have control over my product. Like, even though you want to have full saturation too, you don't want so much. Like I see some people when they're doing like their baby like, you know, you're just putting a ton of product in there. Like if you put too much, you will spread into the area you don't want. So although you do see a nice heavy coating and saturation of the light here, I am still like being mindful that I don't want it to go too far or swell too much. And I think just by even opening up these sections, it helps because that's something you want to do through your process. Because again, she has a lot of hair. So all of this hair is lying on top of each other, creating an encapsulation and creating heat sources with the lightener. So if I have had clients in the past who, you know, I wasn't thinking about it. And, you know, I was a younger stylist and I have compromised someone's hair like completely in the middle of the hair and like broken it. Um, unfortunately. And a lot of that just came from not realizing like, wow, they do have a lot of hair and that hair is overlapping, 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 and just creating a whole incubation of a lot of heat in one set area. Continuing to just saturate, you know, the name of the game is like just being a lot, you know, Allowing yourself the time to take something um, kind of tedious and a little more time consuming is a simple application. But in here, just the way I go about this application is also how I teach to do like regular gray retouches or root smudging, even um, because it kind of has helped me in different forms of application and working with roots, whether I am looking to really like blend something beautifully as a root smudge 
or I'm working with something like this, which is a global lightning that needs, um, you know, part of that design and plan and then part of its own customization as well. As the whitener starts to swell, your sections are going to get easier to kind of open up or check on. That's another good sign that your whitener is at a good consistency and hasn't gotten too thick or hasn't gotten, you know, too thin either. Definitely shouldn't see it like swiffing and dripping and swelling like crazy. Um, you might be having a chemical reaction if you have something like that going on. Or you might have just applied way too much and it didn't have like a proper consistency to set you up. Or they might be radiating some kind of heat, you know. Sometimes saltwater pools can do some strange interactions with lightener. Sometimes dry shampoos can have strange interactions or dangerous shampoos. So always make sure nothing seems like it's steaming or getting too hot. Um, by now, I've always checked in with my client, Olivia, how's your scalp doing? Can't feel anything. So she's a pro. You can see, you can barely see those little areas where we're going to want to go into and feather down. And she's got a little bit of that old warmth. So we're just going to go ahead and end that area, just feather it out. And that'll be the third time I'm in that area from start to finish so far. So I just kind of want to state that for everyone that is kind of looking into, you know, does that seem excessive or you know, why, why are we doing that? I'm timing everything to be as appropriate as I can with having old histories going on in the hair in different levels in front of me that I'm wanting to try to get as close to that and blend as possible. Cutting down those subsections is gonna help me. So you can see we're getting great lifts. I'm going to kind of wipe some off for you. That's where we are so far. I'm going to swipe that lightener back on. And again, kind of softly feather. I have options of like meat squashing at the bowl. So you know, it's just this process, you're really just wanting to kind of work in your quadrants. My application time, usually by now with this, you know, when I start to move through my front sections here, by the time I've completed them in this same method, it'll be ready to rinse the back. And then I'll wait for the front to catch up. That's how another part of how I control my process. And the fact that the lightener is going to start working the minute it touches this head. And then we've got a few more minutes together in our live. So if there are any other questions, I think it would be a great time to take a few. Outside of that, I definitely will have the whole process um, before and after that I know that we shared um, in the like quick marketing for this what she was last time. That's pretty much our goal this time, just as light and as cool and as icy as we possibly can. Um, but I am gonna stitch those formulas onto the photos that I'll be sharing with Lily. So you will get like a good understanding of where we started with our level, where we ended up after lightning, and then what our complete formula is um, and why. <laughs> So what we're going to do is Ash is going to send me those photos. This video will actually be uh, down. We'll, we'll upload this video to our YouTube channel, and we will include in that video the images and uh, details and the formulas that Ash used. So everything will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, which is Sharkfin Shears Dash Beauty, and you can see everything there. Uh, it'll it'll be there uh, by tomorrow morning. Let's let's be realistic. <laughs> Hopefully by the end of the day, but if not, it'll be there uh, tomorrow morning. I think that's a great resource to recap something, or you know, again, like everyone needs a different color lines. So I'm hoping that in those resources, I can provide you you know my thought process, 
obviously I've seen some banding come up, but pretty safely to say we're going to definitely be in a higher level 10 as she is actually going to be as a light, a bright, as blonde as we can have. Um, and Ash, if you have time, there are a few uh, people who are on here who would also like an update on the other uh, color client yeah. you were doing as well. Probably perfect time, actually. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm going to do a little bit more good stuff. All right. So we're back over to our base. Let's go ahead and look at our very first color that we because that's always the best one to start with. And then, like we said earlier, we do have a tester foil. So we want to check that out as well. So you can see we're still in that situation with the band, which is the hardest stuff we do in here, in my honest opinion. I think that's the, the conversation we overlook a lot of times. And I think that's the conversation I have a lot more these times with my clients. Um, is the more that they know that up front, like she was really good about sharing her hair history with me, which always makes our job easier because it can get uncomfortable if they're like, no, I have virgin hair. I mean, it could be an honest mistake that they just didn't realize like, oh, I mean, it looks so natural, you know, it's not actually artificial, but artificial color, whether it's a demi or a permanent, you don't know how the underlying pigment tonalities of those colors are going to work and play. And then you don't always know, like, again, where the old highlights really work, you know? If you're going in and you think somebody's a brunette and you go to list and, like, somebody like myself, you can see obvious, you know, changes in my hair. All of this hair has a lot of history. I mean, I am level, like, 9, 10 underneath this copper. And so even as I had black hair, I had green hair, I had brunette ashy blonde hair, you know, the truth of the matter is I'm platinum like Olivia is underneath all of that. And so that hasn't erased from my hair. And I think those are the conversations we need to really hone in on when we're doing any type of blonding service. Obviously in a consultation, it's so important. Terms that we use together um, was like, she has shown me that she has had platinum hair um, and that she's always been able to have platinum hair. So when I hear that and like me hair doctor, she's gonna make you a little nervous because you're like, okay, they have always had this. So like, can it be done? Will it go down like this? And, you know, what what might we expect? So we always like to prepare them for, if it can be done, it will be done. If not, this would be why. So we made sure she's not out of time with restraint. We made sure she understood the process. And we made sure that she understood our biggest area of challenge is going to be where we've had previous colors. So our approach doing this, you can already tell is setting us up for the most success. Because this is just going to keep getting blonder and blonder and blonder and more platinum. And we are going to cut some shaggy layers in her hair and do a little bit of that. But it's still really important for us to concentrate and continue to overlay and overlap and saturate these more stubborn challenging areas we have in front of us. So we're going to stop applying there and let that catch up because we're still going to have to tackle this route as well. But we really need to get all of this lifted as healthily and safely as possible to have that option. Um, and I know we had the one foil where we did roll up the end. And I do want to check on that one really quick. I'm going to tilt you just one more time, Melody. Yeah, so still pretty dark in the ends. So it's kind of important to know that because, you know, we know that the ends are going to be a little weaker. We know that they will get up because they are finer and a little weaker. But we do need to know how quickly, you know, kind of gives you a speed, a roundabout. Um, you will see a lot of what I'm doing through a sandwiching. That's just going to make this reapplication easier. It's also going to make sure your saturation is as even as you possibly can have it. Um, with what you're working with. Outside of that, I'm lucky we're doing black coloring. It's not her whole entire head like my normal day today. Um, or I'm doing baby lights where, you know, I'm going to run into this throughout the whole head. So you're going to see light, 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 and then a band. Um, and again, I think previous color is the absolute hardest part of what we do um, with clients having different varieties of hair types and textures and all those other factors. Thank you, Ash. Yeah, of course. Do we have any other questions? Uh, we did have one more, and cool. it just disappeared. 
I, what, what was the reason you only did one foil with the ends in it and not all of them? Um, because I do think that they will get lighter. Like I, I, I'm assuming, especially because the hair is finer, that there probably is some low light there because I could see already that the color um, with previous color is a lot more saturated on the bottom of this portion, but it is finer density hair. So they are more fragile. They do have more history. There probably are going to be some like highs and lows. So I just know that that is still going to look lighter than this big area here. So I'm just timing them because it's going to be so easy just to rub those ones out in a proper timing. Um, because again, we do still also have the root that will Right. awesome awesome well everybody everyone is very appreciative uh and and someone did ask a question if there were any more uh upcoming classes yes absolutely you can visit our website sharkfinshears.com click the virtual education tab and you'll see a full calendar of classes that we have coming up uh, we have a lot of haircutting classes coming up as well I'm just going to have to play a little bit in the back. Play on the temperature of your salon. We get a little cool and hot in here because we've got, you know, blue dryers going sometimes and then our hormones going at other times. I'm not going to put saran wrap in the whole thing, but I may do a little encapsulating like that. I may also use it as a um, divider from what I'm going to be doing now that I'm moving into the front section. So all you're going to see me do to move forward and I'm just going to continue to take vertical sections, and then I'm going to go back through and take horizontal or diagonal sections for that second cross check in the third. Fantastic. Ash, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for allowing us into the salon. Everyone who did join, thank you so much. Uh, we will get the video uploaded with the, with the pictures that Ash is going to provide. And don't forget, if you're in the market for a new pair of shears, you can use Ash's code, which is the letter X, the letter O, and you'll get two free texture shears and a free razor. They are the absolute best shears if you like better. All my girls turned on to them here. So if you want quality shears, 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Um, you can't go wrong. And outside of that, thank you guys so much for letting me hang out with you guys. I feel like I've been like out of retirement, so it's been fun to do this again. Um, thanks, Lily, for the opportunity and catching us. And yeah, I'll let you guys know the next time we have a good opportunity, but we'll play catch up with both. I'll even like do a final of her hair. I'll give you all the tips here, but maybe Lily will let me like slide in her, her final form photo too. Absolutely. Anything you want, it's yours. No cliffhangers. <laughs> awesome. Have a great day, everyone. Ash, thank you so much. And uh, thank you uh, behind the camera as well. Yeah, thank you, Melissa, for being my wonderful camera woman. <laughs> Have a great day. We've got to help all the rest of the... <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.